Okay, so let's work on configuring and using web enrollment through ADCS. Now, when we installed ADCS, we went ahead and installed the ADCS uh, web enrollment service. But that installs it, but it doesn't configure it. We have to do a bunch of configuration through IIS to configure the web server that's hosting it all. So we're going to start by opening up the IIS Manager through Tools, and we're going to click on our server. And from our server, we're going to come down to Server Certificates, and we are going to set up a certificate for this server to use for SSL. Now, if I were doing a publicly hosted website, I'd probably want to create and complete a certificate request through a publicly trusted CA. In this case, since I'm doing it for my domain, I'm going to create a domain certificate, which is going to request it from my uh, domain server. So I'm going to start by setting my common name, and that's going to be my machine name, david.dalton.local, and you need that to match exactly. The rest of the information is... Um, it's going to be used when you do this through a public CA. It's going to be used to verify that you are who you say you are. Um, when you're doing it locally, it's not as big of an issue. But this information will show up on your certificate. So I just used my class name as the organization. The organizational unit is my name on down through. Okay. Now, I'm going to specify our online certification authority. If I hit select, it's going to show me my existing domain CAs. So I'm just going to grab that existing domain CA and say, let's get it from there. This is going to be my SSL certificate. Let's spell certificate correctly. And click finish. And that friendly name is how I'm going to identify it a little bit later on. So that's basically for me. Okay, so now I have an SSL certificate active um, or associated with my server. Now, I'm going to go to Sites, expand that. I'm going to right-click on my default website and go to Edit Bindings. So by default, I'm only listening on port 80 on any address. And I can specify specific addresses that I want it to listen to. Um, but I'm okay with listening to all of them at the moment. But I do need to bind it to HTTPS. And I'll leave it all in assigned port 443. I'm going to set my host name, david.dalton.local. And then I'm going to specify my SSL certificate, and I'm going to grab this one right here that I just created, and hit OK. All right, so now I have an SSL certificate set up. Now I need to expand my default website, find my search server, and go to my SSL settings. And from here, I'm going to require SSL, I'm going to ignore client certificates, and apply my changes. Okay, IIS is now set up. One other issue, however, and that is that this uses VBScript. So Internet Explorer, which is what I have available to test this with, doesn't support VBScript by default, at least for Internet Zones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my tools or my settings and my Internet options, and I'm going to, on my security tab, I'm going to add a trusted site. And the site is going to be david.dalton.local. I'm going to add that after I add the HTTPS in front of it. There we go. Okay, now I should be able to use this site. Let's see if we can make it work. So I'm going to go to HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash David dot Dalton dot local forward slash cert SRV. That's my certificate server. Okay, I'm going to have to log in. And once I log in, this brings me to my website where I can manage my certificates. And so I can request a certificate, view the status of a pending certificate, download a certificate or certificate chain or CRL. So let's do a request a certificate. Now I have a quick certificate that I can do here that's a user certificate. And if I click that, it says this website is attempting to perform an operation on your behalf. Do you want to do this? Yes. We don't need any further information, so we just click Submit. Waiting for response. It's requesting to do something. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes. 
And there's my certificate already issued and now I can just click install the certificate and that will successfully install my certificate. Let me go back home. So that gives me a user certificate. Let's do another request. This time let's do an advanced certificate request. Create and submit a request to the CA. Same thing. Yes, we want to allow it to run. And this time I'm going to choose a code signing certificate. And so I can set the options that I want for it, or I can just leave the default options in place. And I'm going to do that because we're just demoing it here real quickly. Let me do the friendly name here, code signing, just for the fun of it. And click Submit. Once again, ask, are you sure you want to do this? Yes. I want to install this certificate. Certificate has been installed. Okay, cool. Now, if this works correctly, let me go ahead and close out of here. I'm going to go back to Run and open up my Microsoft Management Console. Add a snap-in for certificates for my user account. And then expand certificates, personal certificates, and look, I now have lots of other certificates that have been given to me. So, um, I have right here is my code signing certificate. This one right here was my Windows 10 certificate that I auto-enrolled in. This was the user certificate that I requested. So, all of my certificates, I've been able to grab them from that web interface. Now, let's hop back in real quick to our certification authority tool. And I, there's a couple of other things that I want you to see here. So the first one is this, issued certificates. These are all of my certificates that have been issued and all the information about them. I can choose to revoke a certificate by right clicking on the certificate, all tasks, and I can revoke that certificate. And when I revoke that certificate, it is no longer valid. I'm gonna say certification hold as the reason for it. Now that certificate is no longer valid. And if I go to my revoke certificates, I should find that that certificate has been revoked. So if somebody requests a CRL, a certificate revocation list, they'll say, all right, don't accept this particular certificate anymore. If I have any pending requests, now those are requests that get submitted to my CA that aren't automatically approved, and the ones we just did were automatically approved, so they don't really count there. But if I have pending requests that need uh, administrator approval, they will show up here. And if I have any failed requests for any reason, they will show up here. Okay, so that takes us through uh, setting up a the web enrollment form and seeing how we can use the web enrollment to request uh, certificates for users.